Today's video is supported by Rockform. I'll tell you more about them at the end of the video. Talk about the scout. Nope, I don't wanna. I'm not talking about it. Go ahead. No, no, I'm not talking about it. I'm not gonna talk about it. Obviously, I do wanna talk about the scout. What bike is this? This is the Scout Bobber. We rented it today on Twisted Road. We're gonna be comparing it against our Sportster and see once and for all, which is the better American cruiser. We're gonna take these bikes out in the city in the twisty roads on the highway and really shake down both of these bikes and see what they're all about. Now, of course I hear you say out there, but Spite, you can't compare the Scout to the Sportster. The Scout's making so much more power. It's liquid cooled. It's got all this new technology and the Sportster's from like 1987 and barely makes any power. Well, these are both very attainable American cruisers that are really designed for everyday use. And yes, the Sportster here, the 883, is a little bit down on power and the 1200 does compare more favorably. It is worth noting that the only difference between the 883 and the 1200 are the jugs and the final drive gearing. They feel very similar in all other respects, but let's get a little bit of history on both of these motorcycles because ostensibly they are about heritage and which one has more classic American styling. So let's see which one gets the bearded hipster flannel seal of approval. All right, starting things out for the home team is our giveaway Sportster Iron 883. This is actually gonna be the next bike we give away. So if you wanna get entered, you gotta click the link down below. Go to yamminoob.co and get yourself signed up. Now, a little bit of history on this motorcycle. It came out in 1957 and has been running ever since. In 1986, they introduced the Evolution engine and in 2007, it got fuel injection, ABS, and a couple of other, other things. Now, this motorcycle has an 883cc, 45 degree air-cooled V-twin that's putting down 50 horsepower and 54 foot-pounds of torque. Weighs in at 560 pounds, so it's a little bit heavy, but why don't we talk about our challenger, the Indian Scout. So this here is an Indian Scout Bobber 2019 to be exact. We got it on Twisted Road. Once again, if you want to get yourself a free day of riding, click that link down below. A little bit of history on this bike. It first got its start in the early 1910s when it saw a ton of popularity. It was one of the first motorcycles that really ended up taking off. It saw race victories. It saw just widespread adoption across America and the world, to be honest. And it ended up in World War II where soldiers were using it all over the European theater. It went until about the 1950s when Indian abruptly canceled it and then died later on in that decade. Polaris did end up bringing back the Indian brand and the Scout name in a brand new motorcycle that you see here today. This was an 1133cc, 60 degree liquid cooled V-twin that's making 100 horsepower and 72 foot-pounds of torque. It does weigh about the same as the Sportster at about 550 pounds, so just a hair lighter, but not by much. Let's get these bikes out on the road with Josh and let's see how they really do feel head to head downtown. All right, so we are here in the city with both of these cruisers. Ostensibly, they are meant to be good city bikes and we're going to test that out. Uh, I rode down here on the Harley. Why don't I take the Scout into the city and we'll switch off about halfway through, shall we? Going back and forth between these two cruisers, they set up everything completely differently between these two companies. <laughs> like they made a point that had mm -hmm. to be different. Out in the city, where these cruisers are meant to just be kind of easy going, simple things to ride, how do you feel on the Harley? Hmm. Again, it just doesn't feel totally natural and <laughs> uh, intuitive to ride. So being in the city, I feel like that's holding me back just a little bit. See, the, the opposite is true on this motorcycle. It's very intuitive to ride. However, it almost feels like a loaded gun, this bike, because yeah. it has so much more power on tap. Now, it's pretty docile down low. Like, I can open the throttle, and it, it still goes pretty good. Uh, like, this is not a beginner bike at all. But if you're not responsible with the throttle, you, it's... It's surprising how quickly this motorcycle really does pick up speed. And yeah, it, it doesn't it, take long at all. Yeah, it makes it a little harder to 
ride around because it's you're constantly having to think about it. And then going over those bumps back there, that single monoshock in the back, uh, being that this is the bobber, it is slammed down a little bit. It doesn't feel great, honestly. I mean, the suspension is okay. It's not as bad as the Sportster was when we first got it. Yeah. But it still isn't the most comfortable motorcycle uh, for me. I like having my feet underneath me as opposed to in front of me so that I can actually lift my weight off my butt and those bumps don't go right into my spine. Just yeah. ro rolling through the city? Man, it's a lot more comfortable. The Sportster um, is a very comfortable motorcycle, uh, despite the fact that it shakes so bad, you know? Yeah. Like, it's really, I can see the <laughs> engine shaking away. <laughs> and that's one thing this bike doesn't do, right? Even when you hold the throttle open, it doesn't really shake the way that that thing does. Yes. Like, and I'm looking at your hand, I'm looking at the wheel, I'm looking at the engine, everything is shaking. Yep. Yeah, and throughout the power band, like as you're riding this thing, at different points it shakes. You know, it mm -hmm. shakes right when you're getting onto it in first. It shakes, you know, w when you're low in the gears uh, and, and at different points. Whereas that one's a whole lot smoother, uh, pretty much the whole time, basically. Yup. Yeah, I feel like that's right around 3,000 RPM that that motorcycle really kind of mellows out a little bit and just, just finds its happy spot. Yeah. But on either side of that, it shakes pretty bad. <laughs> yes. Now, as we're going stoplight to stoplight here, I really do appreciate how much torque this bike has, but I can't use it, you know? Yeah. Because the speed limit's 35 down here. Uh, cars aren't accelerating the way that a motorcycle accelerates. So yes, this has a lot of power over the Sportster. And that's true even for the 1200, even though we're dealing with the 883. It's, it's like uh, riding an R1. This is like the R1 of cruisers, essentially. Um, you know, obviously people are going to be like, oh, but the Diablo. But <laughs> for American bikes, this thing is pretty dang fast. How do you feel about heat? Because the main difference between these two motorcycles is how they're cooled. This yeah. being liquid cooled and that being air cooled. Are you feeling a lot of heat building up as you're going from stoplight to stoplight? It's not building up but I definitely feel it. It's warm in the inside of my thighs. And like on today, that's welcomed. But if it was 105 outside right now, that it would, would probably suck. really suck. Yeah, because um, yeah, especially sitting here now on my right side, more so than my left side, I'm definitely feeling it heat my inner thigh. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get that on the, on the Scout at all. Yeah, now that we're stopping and starting more, I am feeling the fans kick on. Mm -hmm. It's definitely cooler, but this is a hot, more hopped up engine, so it does build heat a little bit more than the Sportster does. It just also can handle the heat better than the Sportster can. So just for sake of argument, why don't we say we do a little suburban delinquent here and from the stoplight to the other crosswalk. What do you, you say? It. Let's do it. All right, three, yeah. two, one. Oh, you have me. Yeah, I think that's just down to how much more potent this engine really is. It's uh, it's a very good engine in this motorcycle. It is an excellent engine. The Sportster's really not too wanting for power, to be honest. No, no, it doesn't feel like that. That's one of the biggest things. You look at those spec numbers and you think it's going to be like slow and feel slow. It's not the case. This bike never makes you think, oh man, this thing is slow and sucks and has no power. Well, I think in the city, these bikes are pretty well equal, honestly. Uh, so why don't we go out and get them onto the highway and see if there are any real big differences that we can suss out. Alrighty, changing things up here. I am now on the Sportster. Josh is on the Scout. We're doing a little bit of highway testing. And this, I believe, is going to be the one place that the Scout just clobbers the Harley uh, with absolute wanton abandon, honestly. I don't think there's anything that the Harley can do, the 883 or the 1200, to compete with that Indian Scout. I think the Scout is just much better at highway cruising. How you feeling? Um, I have to agree with you. This is about as ideal as I could ask for here for highway cruising. Um, I mean, we've got a couple stoplights, and you know, I was complaining about how I was hitting uh, neutral instead of second gear, but that doesn't have anything to do with how 
it handles sitting in a straight line at speed on the highway and it's so steady it feels really nice now with that big fat cruiser front tire on there it'll be it'll be telling to see how you feel with it going side to side because conventional wisdom says narrow tire spinning faster less inertia easier to dip in mm -hmm. so as we get going keep an eye on how that tire feels because when i was riding it on the highway it didn't seem like it was slowing the bikes down any honestly it still felt yeah. like the indian was more nimble and you know again just pulling away from a stop here i got to imagine you can actually use some of that 100 horsepower that i bemoaned having in the city Absolutely, you can. I can tell that the Harley's having to do a lot of work getting around cars. How's the Scout feeling? Oh, it's not breaking a sweat. Even, even just back there. Yeah, you give it a give it a nice twist and a second, and it does take it, it does take a second to like spin up to really deliver that power to you. Um, but man, is it there! Uh, the forward position of these foot pegs. Uh, the, the rake back on the handlebars here uh, it's extremely comfortable and like we were talking about a second ago with the big old tire up front it's very steady how's the vibration on that because right now you know uh, I'm having to work it through the gears to really find that one sweet spot we were talking about that it's kind of right around 3,000 rpm where this motorcycle mellows out yeah. but when I'm either side of that 3,000 RPM mark, I, I feel like I'm sitting on top of a blender. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing for the Scout because it has none of those problems. Mm -hmm. uh, just now, I mean, so I was sitting at 60, and with as much power as this bike has, you could be in fourth at 60, you could be, you could reasonably be in third at 60, or fifth, or sixth gear. And, and I just changed between the few of them. Uh, and no difference in the amount of vibration or anything between those those gears. It was perfectly happy to do 60 miles an hour, uh, third, fourth, and fifth gear. All right, so I'm in third gear. Why don't you come up a little closer next to me? All right, and three, two, one, go. That was no contest whatsoever, man. Uh, I don't think so. But I can see you for a couple seconds. <laughs> you literally just pulled away. That 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 was really funny. Um, and you know yeah. what? That's the same. The 1200 Sportster does the same thing. Yeah, it has a little bit more power. But these these Sportsters don't like to rev out, and they don't they don't deliver their power in a super quick way on the highway. You really got to work these bikes to, to get them to go. I kind of feel when I'm riding the Harley, um, especially being newer to riding, that I don't know exactly what to do to make that bike happy. Whereas you don't notice anything like that on the Scout because it's just happy doing whatever. I feel like there's a, you, know, you need to know about your power and you need to know about the happiest RPMs at certain speeds on that bike in order to really get the riding characteristic that you want out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel that way this one, on this bike. It just feels intuitive and if, well, really, it's not that it's intuitive. It's just happy no matter what gear you're in at any speed because it's got the extra power. I, I can say this very confidently that the Scout is a better motorcycle than any Sportster. The 883, the 1200 Iron, the 1200 Roadster, the Fat, uh, uh, what is it, the 48. The Scout just clobbers on all of them. It's so much better, but it doesn't have, there's something about it that just doesn't feel know, super fulfilling to me. All right, so that was some good riding. Both of these bikes, I feel like we had them in all of the places that cruisers are meant to be. Give me kind of some rough final impressions you have of both of these bikes. Yeah, so some standout shortcomings uh, of either bike. Um, for, for the Scout, it's the seat. There were a number of different times and places when the seat um, was making my butt hurt, you know? Mm -hmm. It just, just wasn't all that comfortable. It doesn't hold you uh, forward when you're laying on all that torque. Um, so that was a bit of a pitfall there. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say for the Harley is the, I don't like the vibrations. Yeah. 
it's not it's not my thing and uh it just changes at all different times for all you know, we did a lot of different use cases and from stoplight to stoplight from different gears on the highway i could not put my finger on when it was going to be rattling when it wouldn't be mm -hmm. when it was happy um, and that was one of the things that was kind of clogging up my mind while I was riding it. Yeah, the Sportster, you really do have to ride it the way that it wants to be ridden. It's, it's, a, it's a very rattly, shaky motorcycle, but that's part of the reason why I love it so much. Mm -hmm. Because it's unapologetically old school, mostly because it is really old school. Uh, I mean, this engine's been around since 1980, uh, yeah, 1987, and it really hasn't changed all that much. But on conversely, this motorcycle, the Scout's engine is unbelievable. Yeah. It's so good. And it's just, it goes like nobody's business. It's when you hop on it on second gear, it'll just bury the needle really quickly. This bike is yeah. so fast, faster than it has any right to be, honestly. Um, <laughs> it's really kind of cool. The only problem is going back to that seat. It doesn't hold you in place. It needs it yeah. needs an ass shelf to really make it rideable. And then for me, I had an issue with the you know turning nature of this motorcycle. I think down to that big front fat tire, it really does cause the motorcycle to feel a little bit more ponderous in a corner. Yeah. Whereas the Sportster feels really good and pretty well balanced with this new suspension setup in a corner, don't you think? I totally agree. I think that was the big takeaway coming away from the Twisted Road section that we did on Lime Creek, um, is that yes, this one glides, it's smooth, but it's not as nimble, as quick, or as easy to lean it over. Like right. like we were saying is, you know, getting this over farther and farther felt like work, whereas mm -hmm. with that bike, it's really pretty easy to lean it over that way. Which is really funny when you consider that this is the older motorcycle, right? Yeah. That this is the motorcycle that's not supposed to carve a corner. This is supposed to be the cruiser. And it was more at home in a corner, which, yeah. was, which was really weird. I've heard no end of praise for the scouts cornering ability and I feel like I didn't notice it so well. Obviously this is the bobber, it's been lowered a little bit, but it just, it didn't feel like it was as happy in a corner as it was when it was in a straight line, just haul in the mail, cause man alive is that engine just the standout feature on this motorcycle. Yeah. So wrapping things up here today, comparing this cruiser for cruiser, which one do you run out and spend your hard-earned money on? The Scout. The Scout. For me. Okay, yeah. why? Um, I had so much fun on it. Mm -hmm. that's, it really comes down to the fun factor. And I think, again, <laughs> I, that's the engine. That's, yep. that's what it is. Uh, it's the biggest piece for this bike. Um, the ergonomics package is pretty comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. it, you, 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 know, you talk about that clamshell position because of the forward pegs and everything. Um, and it, it is, that's pronounced, but uh, yeah. it's pretty comfortable. I like it. You feel cool. You look cool riding that way. Um, and I could do it for an extended period of time. But this bike is just so much fun to ride. Um, and I, I definitely noticed the additional uh, turning and performance aspects on this one. This one has better front brakes and things like that. Um, but this as a package is just a little bit more complete for me. See, I, I like this bike. I appreciate the Scout, and I do think that in the right light, the Scout is a Sportster killer. Uh, the engine is so far beyond anything that Harley yeah. has. It feels like a little V-Rod almost. And to me, I just, I can't get past the, A, the front brake just doesn't feel that great to me. It's, it doesn't really want to stop the motorcycle, and B, it doesn't really fit me. As a bigger guy, I don't really like my fit on the Scout, and there's not a lot you can do to change it, yep. whereas the aftermarket on the Sportster has so much depth. I mean, it's just been around for years. You can fix this bike up any way you want. And obviously, yeah, I'm the Harley simp. I made the video about how Indian sucks, but I, I have to give Indian props. They made an amazing engine, but they put it in the wrong bike, and I still have to take the Sportster. I know so, you'd go that way, and yeah. it's fair. It's totally fair that it, it held its own beautifully. Yeah, yeah, this guy did not walk all over the Harley uh, at all, unless it's in a straight line. Then, then the Indian walks all That's over the true. Harley. No problem. <laughs> yeah, unless you're racing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Rockform for supporting the channel. They make the KTM Super Duke a phone mount. It's 
powerful, it's beefy, and it's affordable. Okay, maybe it's not the KTM Super Duke of mounts, but you get what I'm saying. Right now, hit the link below and use the code YN25 to get yourself an awesome phone case and mount combination for your ride. We use it on our personal bikes. Spite's got one on his KTM Supermoto, and I've got one on my desert sled that I recently used on a trip to New Mexico where I needed to check my GPS. Again, hit the link to Rock Form and check out their products. Code YN25 gets you 25% off your order at checkout. Keep watching Yammy Noob. 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 Keep watching Yammy Noob.